So let's talk about the power of compounding. We've talked about it before, but not just the power of compounding gains, but let's also talk for a second about the power of compounding losses. That's something that we never want to talk about. We want to think about the compounding power of gains, but it's important to consider the power that a loss can have on a portfolio and how that can compound the situation. I'm, I'm using this as an example of why in those good years we're not trying to beat the market. So inevitably, and I understand why, and I get it, but inevitably we always have clients or investors or friends out there who are like getting 25% in the market. Why, you know, if the S&P 500 or the Dow earned 24, 25%, why am I getting 18 in my portfolio? Why am I getting 14% in my portfolio? Of course, the simple answer to that question is we never put all the money in the stock market because our clients have different risk scenarios. They're not comfortable with putting all their money in the stock market. So everybody's different, but typically we're not putting all the money in the market. And we have some defensive type strategies to help mitigate risk because it's not always how much we make. It's in those bad times how much we lose. And so what I wanted to show you here are two examples of a portfolio. Portfolio A, $100,000. Portfolio B, $100,000. The difference between the two is this portfolio is diversified. It doesn't have all the money in the stock market. In fact, it may only have hypothetically 40 or 50% of this portfolio might be invested in the market. This portfolio is fully invested in the market. It's tracking the index. It's going to make as much as the market loses, and it's going to lose as much as the market loses in difficult years. So let's say the market corrects 50%. We've had several of those. We've had two, at least, of those in the last 20 years. So it corrects 50% to the bottom. Your 100000 if you lose 50%, is worth $50,000. Over here in portfolio A, when the market was going up, it wasn't making 23 or 24%. It might have only been making 10, 12, 14% because of how the conservative nature of how you had your money invested. And that portfolio, if it loses 20%, is now down 80. So we have one portfolio now when all the dust clears and the bottom of the market is set, which no one knows when, only in retrospect. But we've got 80 left and we've got 50 left. So what is the damage? What is it going to take an investor to get back to just breaking even, let alone making money? On this portfolio, if you have $80,000 invested, you had 100, but it dropped to 80. So you have 80,000 to work with, not 100 you're going to need to earn a 25% return on that moving forward to get back up to $100,000. $80,000 with a 25% return nets a $20,000 gain, which gets you back up to $100,000. On this portfolio, you don't have $100,000 anymore. You have $50,000 that you have to grow back to $100,000. What's it going to take? You're going to need to make a 100% return on your 50,000 to get back to 100,000. And this is why many people like Warren Buffett and other famous investors always preach it's not always how much you make, it's also how much you lose. So when we're meeting with you, our clients, and we're building diversified portfolios, we're asking you all those questions that feel like you're sitting in front of a psychologist answering these questions about how would you feel about this, how would you feel if the market dropped like this? How would you feel? That's what we're getting at. We're trying to assess what you're comfortable with, what your risk tolerance is going to be, so we can fit you in a portfolio that's going to be right for you. And everybody's situation is different, but just remember, the power of compounding can work for you. It can also, in difficult times, work against you.